This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In a previous lesson, I stacked these three images, Medusa and Gargoyle, one, two, and three together. And I mentioned that they were the exact same image, simply shot with different exposure settings. It's a technique called bracketing. And basically it allows the camera to take one shot at your current exposure. It'll then automatically take an underexposed shot and an overexposed shot as well. You can then take these three images and merge them together to combine the exposure information from each. The basic idea is that the lighter one will have more detail in the shadow areas and the darker one will have more detail in the highlighted areas and the normal one provides a base. In Photoshop Elements, you can accomplish this merging effect by creating a photo merge exposure. I'm going to select all three images, and then from the File menu, File New, Photo Merge Exposure. Once again, it's going to take these images into the Photoshop Elements editor, load them all up, and then run the photo merge effect. Now, once your images have been fully compiled, you have several choices here. If your goal is simply to create a well-balanced image, normally you can simply in the edit panel, choose simple blending and leave it at that. Simple blending is intended to be a one click, one press of a button option to create a well-blended image. There's nothing to edit, there's nothing to control. The application simply attempts to give you what it considers a well-balanced shot. Smart Blending gives you more options. Smart Blending provides sliders, highlight detail, shadows, and saturation. These sliders allow you to control the amount and type of blending in the image. So for example, you can change the detail in the highlight areas. I'm just gonna slide it to the left a little bit. I'll have to wait for the preview to rebuild, but what you can see is that it now changed. I'm going to change the saturation, the intensity of the colors. You'll notice now that everything seems to have taken on a yellowish or brighter tint. I'm going to change the highlight detail again to raise it. And then once that preview rebuilds, you'll notice that the more I change it, I have greater control over the individual pieces of this image. By default, the project bin is pulling from all three images, which only makes sense. Technically, you could disable one in which case it'll now pull from only the other two. Less data sometimes gives you a better effect, but in this case, since we went to the trouble of shooting three images, we're probably going to want to use them. Keep in mind that every time you make a change or make an adjustment, the program is going to have to rebuild the final preview for you. Now, you can always reset by pressing the reset button at the bottom of the edit panel, and this will return everything to its default settings. We've all been in the automatic photo merge exposure settings, but there are others. The manual tab changes everything. It's intended to allow you to manually create a photo merge. But since we went to the trouble of running the photo merge effect in the first place, that really isn't what we're going to do here. Automatic is really usually the quickest and easiest way to run this effect. So I'm gonna make a few changes. I'm gonna increase saturation. I'm going to increase the highlight detail, and I'm also going to increase the shadow detail when it becomes available again. Now, if you're only trying to create an image that is well balanced, simple blending is probably your best bet. But if you want to create something that's a little more artistic or a little more unusual, then smart blending is a better option. I'm simply going to choose done, and this is going to complete the photo merge effect. Once again, you're going to have to wait for the application to run and analyze the image. But once the photo merge effect has finished running, you'll have a new image that you can then edit in the Photoshop Elements Editor. Once complete, the photo merge effect gives you a completely new image, a new Photoshop document. And if you want to save it, you can do so using File Save or File Save As. Make sure that you use File Close All to close all of the images you've pulled from the organizer before returning to the organizer itself. And now we're back in the organizer. So the photo merge exposure command is helpful for a variety of reasons. 
One, you can definitely use it to create more artistic or otherworldly effects. Or you can use it simply as a tool for correcting possible exposure problems with images. For it to work, keep in mind you really do need multiple images with different exposure settings to run through the Photomerge exposure tool.